Hello there, it's Nathan Wrigley here from WP Builds. This is going to be a very, very short video just alerting you to the fact that there is this fabulous free product for WordPress called Local, um, and it's created by the, the web hosting company called Flywheel. So its actual name is Local by Flywheel. If you've heard of this before, you can stop right now because I'm not going to teach you anything new, but it's just for those of you who've never heard of this before and are thinking, well, what is it all about? Basically, it's a tool that you download onto your PC or Mac and it enables you to develop sites locally. So rather than having to push them onto some hosting platform, you can do all the hard work on your computer. It stores it in a completely ordinary way, and then you could upload that to Flywheel, for example, which is a hosting company, or to your own hosting environment. So I'm just gonna introduce it very, very quickly. When you go to the download section here, you can see that it's available for Windows and Mac. Like I say, it's completely free. So you enter your details and you get a download and you get an executable file or a DMG file if you're on um, Mac. And you install that, it takes a couple of moments only. And then once you've installed it, you get something that looks a little bit like this. Now I have one site currently on it and I did a tutorial just the other day on a plugin called If So. So I have a site called If So. And you can see that if I click on the admin button over here, it's going to take me to the WP admin. Okay. And if I click on view site, it's going to take me and allow me to look at that site, which is the most uninteresting site you've ever seen. But the point is it's a WordPress install and it's completely held on my computer. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, where, where is it kept? And the clue is just here. So for example, on my Mac, it's in the local sites folder. And this particular site being called if so is in the if so directory. So if I click on this, it's going to open up the finder for me. And on Windows, it would open up the, the correct location for you. I've got the, uh, the directory called local sites, if so, and then it's actually stored in app public and then as you can see from this this is your regular WordPress install with all the files that you download from the WordPress repository for example you've got things like themes and plugins and so on and so forth so it lives all there and the database is here okay Right, that's all you need to know about that. So the question is, how do we get a site to work? Well, you have to start and stop them. So I'm going to stop this site from working and this little green button will go away here. So I'll click stop site. It takes just a couple of moments to kind of like unprovision it if you like, get a little notification there to say it's stopped. And we'll just set up a brand new site just to show you how simple this is. So we're gonna to go to the plus icon at the bottom and I'll just simply call this site test. There are some advanced options. So for example, it's going to be called, the URL that you'll see will be test.local. Now, if I change this to test2, it will be called test2.local. And I'm just gonna keep it as test. And to be honest with you, I don't think it matters when it's local what the URL is, unless you're making YouTube videos or something, in which case it might want to be branded. And you can browse where you would like to store it. And to be honest, I'm just going to keep it in the default location because that makes perfect sense. You can use blueprints. That means that if you've set up a site before and you want to install certain plugins, themes, or make your own customizations, you can have that as a blueprint and it will download that site instead of the one off the wordpress.org repository. So it can be set up just how you like it before, um, before you get a, a vanilla install. Okay, so that, that, was, that probably took me about five seconds. Click continue. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to just go for the default preferred options or do you want to do some custom stuff? And by that, they mean what version of PHP, what kind of web server and your choices are Nginx and Apache and what version of PHP, sorry, MySQL do you want to go for 5.6 or 5.5? I'm just going to go with the preferred because it's so much more straightforward and I'm going to click continue. And obviously I need to set up a user, an admin user for WordPress. So I shall just put in... Uh, Nathan and I shall type in a really hopeless password and it also gives me the choice to put in a WordPress email in here um, I'm just going to leave that um, as it is. in fact now I'll change that I'll change that to admin at WP builds to be honest with you I'm never going to be sending out email from this anyway but there you go is it a WordPress multi-site well it could be 
Yes with subdirectories, yes with subdomains, but I'm gonna leave it as no. And click Add Site. Now this is the bit that takes some time. You can see that at this point, it wants me to uh, enter my password for my Mac, and that's because it's making a change to the hosts file. Now the hosts file, if you've never come across this before, is a, a file which is kind of lurking, hidden slightly in Mac OS, or indeed on your Windows computer, and it tells your computer where to go and look for certain URLs. So for example, um, you know, it might look for Google, or it might have things cached in that way, and it's going to say, okay, look for local, test.local, on the local computer and it's going to need my password to make that amendment. Okay, that's it. It's set up, it's ready to go. Um, you can see here's the details of it. We're on the test site. That test site has been started automatically. There's details here about it has, it's the local environment, it's got Nginx, this is the PHP version, the latest version of WordPress, which only came out yesterday, so that's pretty good. You can change various things, but Information about the database is kept here. If you would like to connect to that database with AdMiner, you can. And if you download SQL Pro, which is, a, I know it's for the Mac, but I guess it's for Windows, I don't know. It's a way of wrangling with um, with the database. It's a bit like PHP, my admin. You can sort of, with a, a visual GUI editor, you can go in and change bits of the database. You can, if you like, tell it to trust this local site so that you don't get warnings in Chrome. I'm not going to bother with that because I'm happy to cope with those warnings. And then there's a utility here. You can open a thing called MailHog. And if the website sends out any emails, let's say you want to test sending out emails, this MailHog will capture them. So instead of them actually egressing from your computer, they will literally be captured by this thing, MailHog, and you can read them as if it had sent them out. So that's just a nice way of avoiding having to use SMTP and real emails. Okay, so let's see how it looks. Let's first of all view the site. Well, there it is. <laughs> Again, you, you can't expect anything because that's all we've done so far. And let's go and view the admin. And if I remember rightly, that was my username. And that was my password. Yay, there we go. And that's it. I've got myself a WordPress install. And obviously from this moment on, if I want to, I can add plugins and themes and what have you. Or obviously I could just jolly well put them directly into my, um, where are we? Content plugins. I could just upload them into my uh, thing over here. I'm actually in the wrong site now, aren't I? That's interesting. I would actually want to be in test. I was in the site from yesterday content plugins and it's basically blank because I have got no plugins installed thus far. Right, only one other thing to mention, I suppose, and that's if I go back here, you can enable something called the live link. This is quite nice if you wish to, um, if you wish to connect to this so that people outside of your local environment can view this website. And if you click enable, it takes a few seconds and it gives you a, a, a URL and you can click on that URL it's a basically a bit of pseudo random nonsense as a subdomain and then it's at the domain ngrok.io and if you were to send this URL to somebody else who is not connected to your network in any way shape or form they can actually browse the site caveat of course is that it will only work if this local by flywheel is switched on and the site itself is turned on as soon as you stop it that will go away as of course will your, um, you know, your own access to it. So that's just something to be careful of. If you do send those um, URLs, make sure that you've got the computer switched on and you, you know, you make that clear to your clients. So just a couple of things to mention. The first one is there are some, um, it says pricing here. There, are, there is an option. The community version is free, but there's a Teams edition. And there's some add-ons which you can get as well, and you can explore those at your own leisure. There's the volumes add-on, mount additional directories. Um, ports, add and manage port forwarding, stats, xdbug, php, storm, <clears throat> excuse me, and notes. And these are all provided by Clay Griffiths, who was the person who, in, who wrote this. I think it was called Pressmatic before it got taken over by Flywheel. Okay, so let's disable that. Let's stop our site. There we go, a little notification to say. And if we go back to our site here and try to refresh it, it will say 502 request error. It's not working because it shouldn't work. Click over here, refresh. 
and the tunnel is no longer found because we switched it off, didn't we? So that's it. If you've never developed on your local computer before and you've always relied upon uh, a hosting environment and you would like to do things like this, perhaps you're, I don't know, perhaps you're taking yourself off somewhere where you've got no internet access. Well, this is the perfect way to do it. And then, of course, you can zip things up, upload them to your normal environment after you've finished. Bear in mind also, if you're a Flywheel user, my understanding is if you click this button down here, connect to Flywheel, it literally just syncs everything and makes it all go straight up into Flywheel's hosting environment. So there we go, that's interesting to know. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you've never used Local by Flywheel, go check it out. Totally free, brilliant. Bye-bye.